Okay, let's talk about blood. And the way we want to start this discussion is talk about its many functions. And it's very interesting to know that most of the functions of blood involve transportation of items from one tissue to another. Almost everything that blood does, you can say, involves transportation. So let's do some examples of transportation. Oxygen comes into the lungs during inspiration. We'll talk about that later. The oxygen diffuses across to the blood and is carried to all tissue. All those tissues then, sooner or later, generate carbon dioxide, which is transported back to the lungs and is exhaled. Transportation also involves amino acids. Amino acids are absorbed by the intestine, and we'll find out later, some of them can be made by the liver. They're transported to all tissues, used for making muscle, also making hormones. But other hormones are not made of amino acids. But wherever hormones are made, they are put into the blood, usually, transported to what's called a distant target tissue. We'll do that when we talk about endocrinology. Blood also transports heat, something we don't maybe think of, but many of the deep internal organs generate a lot of heat, and that heat is passed to the blood, and the blood circulates heat, so the body can be a constant body temperature in our main focus animals, which of course are dogs, cats, and horses. Also, water is transported all over the body by blood, and the tissue that needs Water can uptake water and maintain a hydrated state. And of course, we know that in our focus animals, about 65% of the total body weight is water weight. So for example, if you have a dog that weighs 100 pounds, there are 65 pounds of water in that dog. So man, that's amazing. All these functions are aimed at homeostasis. That means we're going to maintain a steady state in the face of changing external environments. That's what homeostasis is. So a dog has a constant body temperature, constant blood pH, constant amount of hormones usually, although they're, they can vary. I want to now talk about the color of blood since we're doing general things about blood. Here's a test tube of blood collected from some animal, I'm not sure what, but it always is some tint or hue of red, but we know that the color can indicate the oxygenated state of the blood. For example, if you draw a blood sample from a horse, dog, cat, whatever, especially mammals, if it's bright red, by looking at it with your naked eye, then you can say that blood is oxygenated, which means the hemoglobin inside red blood cells has bound oxygen. oxygen. If the blood looks somewhat dull, then we can say we have a deoxygenated sample, which basically comes from the vein. Okay? So, Bright red comes from the arterial side. That means it's full of oxygen. Dull red means the blood has come from the venous side. And here's an example, and I'll enlarge this and just put it all over here, maybe down here a little bit, because on the left side of the screen, and I'll try to point this out, Hopefully you can see that the blood sample is a brighter red as compared to the right sample, which is a dull red. So this blood sample came from an artery. This sample, or I guess you could say sample, came from a vein. And of course, we know that it's hemoglobin that is a pigment, it also binds oxygen, of course, and it's the hemoglobin. 
that's giving us the bright red or the dull red color. Now I want to tell you about the formed elements of the blood. This might seem a strange name to you, but the formed elements refer to anything you can see, any particles that you can see with a microscope, okay? Uh, and they are basically cells or fragments of cells that you can see. You cannot see amino acids, hormones, glucose, or any of those molecules when you look at a microscope. So let's talk about the three formed elements. Urethrocytes, those are also called red blood cells. And notice that urethro here is a prefix that means red, and site is kind of a root term that means cell. So this term literally means red cells. The second type of formed element are the leukocytes. Leuco is a nice little prefix meaning white, and site again refers to cell. So this literally means white cells. And then platelets are the third element and final element that you can see with a microscope. Okay, so now I would like to just show you a sample of a blood smear, and I don't care if I cover over things, it doesn't matter here. But I want to show you a blood smear and enlarge it quite a bit because, first of all, you can see there's an awful lot of red cells, and I'll point one out here, just to the left of my laser pointer, there's a red blood cell, and hopefully you can see that they look more pale in the center versus the edge. That's because red blood cells are biconcave. That's all one word, B-I-C-O-N-C-A-V-E, biconcave. We'll talk more about this later. The white blood cells are less numerous. There's one here, and there's another one here, and that's all we have in our field of view at the moment. Platelets are going to be very small, and they're going to look like little chips off a cell, and that's actually what they are. They're a fragment of a cell of a big mother cell. And those are the formed elements of the blood.